So we will start in the center. You know the, the depth of the of the bar. It's seemingly so you will go one third. If you look closely, I'm doing the intermittent forces, okay? I'm not doing a continuous. If I'm doing it continuously, it will burn. Even if it is not burning, you are using a water spray, still you will be doing uncontrolled cutting. And uncontrolled cutting will lead to too, ma too much uh, removal of the normal tooth structure. Okay, so this is a central pit. I prepared a cavity and it goes almost to 2 milli. So half of the bur is inside. And this is my indication that I have to stop here. Okay, depth wise. Now, I'll prepare a class 1 cavity as we prepared. Uh, for a class 1 cavity in the previous session no the bar should be should always be perpendicular as we are going to break the margin so we'll keep the per it perpendicular until and unless we are preparing a cavity Plus that is a class one. Side. Yes. For example, if we are going here and we are not breaking, so we will slightly tilt it so that the margin ridge is not undermined. But here we are actually removing the margin. So we have to keep it straight. Okay, so I have to keep the depth, you see. Here the depth is alright, but here it's slightly less. So we will go and make the depth even so we'll follow the fissures in the margin margin ridge it will give us an indicator where the contact point is and where we should we should go okay I'll show you again where I am actually going by just checking into the now you see the design of the cavity the outline form <clears throat> you see the outline form and now you see my intention where I am going actually by going into the margin ridges we did not we did not extend to the other side right no no we, we don't need it only from want, the central to the uh, yeah there maximum. are two there are two uh, uh, approaches as i told you in the last yes. one either you go towards the distal margin ridge almost reach there and make a full outline form or you can Depends stay on the in the affected area yes usually the dovetail in the mid portion is i think for me it is sufficient it is sufficient but you can extend it there is no problem but the, the important thing where you, i want you to focus is towards the proximal you see i am extended it here there are two prongs you see here this one and this one mm -hmm. this is just the translation of the secondary grooves which i go in in the margin ridges okay so we'll extend that now here there is the contact point Small. slightly towards the buckle less towards the lingual more towards the facial here is the contact point so i'll follow this until and unless i reach to the uh, a very thin portion that remains of the enamel in the nasal tooth enamel is very brittle if you remove the uh, dentine below the enamel the enamel will flick away but in the plastic tooth it's a bit difficult but i'll show you how to do it so that you can remember and when you are going on the to do it on the natural tooth you will you will you will know it okay now check all the depths every depth is okay the the pulpal floor is fine do it step by step it's much better to do step by step when you are done with the occlusal part then you can go to the to the mesial okay
we'll check it again to see everything is okay okay now we will extend to the proximal but the important thing which I want you to remember is the depth will remain the same till now and till you remove the margin ridge okay so we will extend slightly again when you remove 1 milli or 1.5 milli just stop take your time and check again if everything is okay or not if there is something wrong now is the point to correct it if you remove everything and then want to check and something is wrong it's you're done you have to change the the, the tooth then now you see i've extended it further again and you see the margin ridge has become thinned out but it is still thick enough that you cannot remove it with the help of a explorer or something so I, we will try to remove it a little more so that it thinned out the basic purpose of not removing all the margin ridge thin portion with the burr is to protect the proximal tooth okay if you even brush the uh, the enamel of the proximal tooth it's more amenable to caries then so we don't want to brush it even okay it will be it will be very rough so we'll again again slightly more check the uh, the depth if there is something to be corrected you can correct it at that point here we go again so there was one picture i was showing you which has been extended so we have been extended into the buccal and lingual embrasures Please remember that the contact point is still intact. Okay, the contact point is not broken. See, we have extended into the embrasures, and which embrasure is this? This one is the buckle. So just this one. Go around the. Uh, is the uh, yeah, the contact? Go around the contact until it's yes. uh, only a small piece. And you piece. see if you can remove this with the help of an explorer or a probe or. If this would be a natural tooth, it will easily flick away. But this is plastic, so for it's the hard. plastic tooth, it's hard. You have plastic, it's plastic. You see, it's very hard. So we'll make it a little more. So just see the dimension of this small portion. That is enough for the natural tooth. But for the, obviously for the plastic, for plastic tooth, we will just remove a little more. Make it smooth. Gradually remove it make sure that no extra cutting is done oh, you can use a small band. that's another that is a uh, another method that's a good point that you raise what you can do is to place a band so we can protect the other two yes play, 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 place a band and place a wedge so the advantage of wedge would be it will create a space mm -hmm. okay and the band will protect the the proximal tooth okay but is it indicated in this case yes it is but uh, for the beginners you should first learn to conserve the tooth by just using any aid okay just by the natural see and now it's gone when it becomes smaller it is just removed the depth should be the same the depth for now should be the same there should be no step when you remove the contact area now the contact is removed okay you will smooth it out all if there are any uh, you see here any undermined enamel and everything we should usually use yes we will use the chisel actually but there is no chisels we cannot use it on the plastic teeth it's difficult to cut the plastic tooth with the chisels but you should know the you should know what is the idea behind using the chisel 
all the undermined enamel will be easily cut away with the help of a chisel it's very easy now you have a proximal part cut out okay you start it from here you check all the depth the depth should be uniform so all the depth is uniform it's almost 2 milli okay or 1.5 okay so it is in the buckle uh, lingual and buckle embrasures now they are open the other advantage of extending the margins of the cavities into the embrasures is the tooth restoration interface will come in the self -clean cleansable area okay these are self cleansable areas what do you mean by a self cleansable area yes, it sir. cleans itself by itself you don't need an extra aid to clean these areas oh, just by the movement of the tongue. of the tongue and the cheeks right, right. and the movement of uh, the bolus it will massage all these areas as well as clean it up if something goes inside stuck here it is not self cleansable you have to place something inside a uh, a, a toothpick or a floss to take it out so that is not a self cleansable area but these areas are self cleansable so what is the most risky area after the cavity uh, restoration that needs to be protected those areas where the tooth and the restoration comes in contact the margins of the cavities so if you keep the margins of the cavities in the self cleansable area there is an advantage it will remain clean there will be no food impaction and there is less chances of recurrent caries. So placing the margins in the self-cleansable areas, this is an another advantage. Okay. Now here, we will extend deeper in this area. Okay, so this is the isthmus area. And now we are going to go deeper. It should be 1 to 1.5 bar. Deep. and I told you your your isthmus or your axial wall should be in the form of an arc because why your tooth is like this okay the dimension of the outer surface is this like that so the handpiece should move along like this and it should be slightly tilted towards the distal portion why to make it angulated the axial wall should not be straight as we discussed so it should be like in the arc shape and it should slightly be angulated Again, we will check it, everything is good. I need to do a little more. So the end of the blade is preparing the gingival floor, okay? And the side of the blade is preparing the buckle wall, the lingual wall and the axial wall. Again, you can check. Two mini now. Yeah, so it's deeper. Okay. So almost one millimeter inside the, the gingival floor. Yes, one to one point five is the dimension. You can check the walls if there is any sharp edges, rough margins. You can remove all. The pulpal floor is steady. 
it's almost 1.5 to 2 and then the axial wall it's slightly tilted arc shape and the gingival floor is straight you can use the uh, now this gingival floor is not deeper uh, so that it goes into the radicular dentine so you can use a gingival margin trimmer to make a bevel we cannot uh, make a bevel with these but this is the direction how you use you will place it on the edge of the gingival floor and you can rub it accordingly like this one or two strokes is enough it will create a bevel so if you you're using three four five or more strokes it will create a bigger bevel which is not recommended small bevel just to keep the direction of the rods steady okay now the other important thing in the last sessions is that see the clearance it should the gingival floor should be clear at least one milli from the adjacent tooth okay you should be deep enough so that because when you go from occlusal towards the root it goes like this okay so as you go more towards the tooth itself this area will be cleared so as you go deeper you are clearing okay so your depth will be translated by looking deeper into the this area so you see my tip of the explorer or tip of the uh, probe is going inside okay here it's clear more here it's also clear the cable surface angles if they are rough you can make it smooth at the end the gingival floors slightly convergent and this is how your cavity should look like okay this is the cavity the final shape but there is another option if you want to extend it more distally you can extend it always use brushing movements and slow movements So I'm keeping the cavity a bit wider if you compare it with the uh, cavities in the yes this is because we have slightly bigger uh, wow. con condensers For the condenser. yeah that's the problem uh, we can use the small condenser not the big do we have a small condenser? Yes, uh, not the small. Uh, uh, other side. These are still big. This is the smallest condenser, yes. which is considered the biggest for me. So you see, this is exactly the size of the cavity where the condenser can go. Because Even in the in the in the proximal, you see this proximal portion. Even it is still smaller. We can use this sometime. Uh, this is not a condenser actually, I but know. okay. But it's smaller. Yes, it, it should apply an equal pressure. The f two to five pounds per square inch pressure should be equally. If you push, this is basically a burnisher. So it will slide away. Oh. The particles will rotate and slide away. So the actual condensation will not occur. It's not a flat surface. No, no, this is a burnisher actually. Yes. It's not a condenser. What's the point of using this now? Hmm? What's the point of using it now? Just to make sure that it's going inside. Ah. If it is smaller, it will not go. Okay? You see? The depth is just right, the extension of the cavity is, is just right. Isthmus? In the isthmus, it is 
slightly still small but I don't want to make it more bigger I don't like it would be so this is how you prepare a cavity there is some some a little if you feel like some uh, rough margins here and there you can finish it off with the help of a handpiece ideally with the help of a uh, chisel why should the margin area the here this should there should, there must be a step between the occlusal and the proximal part the the reason is that the in the proximal part the rule is that you have to cross the contact point and go deeper so if you go deeper than the contact point you will must be having a step okay if you like for example if you say that i don't want a step so you start from here and you cut all the way and make a straight pulpal floor what is the problem in that here there is a pulp beneath in the gingival side there is no pulp okay you have a liberty to go a bit deeper here but if you go straight from here like for example you prepare a 3 or 3.5 millimeter deep cavity all around with no stem you will expose the pulp on here and here while you are removing it so that is why a step preparation is a more conservative preparation okay this is basically the logic behind it so you will remove all the excess by a straight chisel this is not a straight chisel but i'll just give you a demo just to make you understand no we don't have a straight chisel actually so you will clear all the walls from the irregular surfaces clear the gingival floor the axial wall you can smooth the the line angle this is a chisel but not a straight one the straight one is like straight okay it's a mono angle or bi angle you can also you see this is the exopulpal line angle the exopulpal line angle should be rounded so this is rounded okay okay so this is a class 2 cavity that has been prepared to you okay with the proximal and occlusal part any confusion any question you can ask if you want